call to order a meeting of the Harwich Planning Board here in the Griffin Room of Town Hall, Tuesday, July 31st, 2018 at 6.30. I'd like everyone to know that we are going to be recording and, and taping this proceeding. And as required by law, the town may audio or video this, this meeting and we're doing so. Any person intending to either audio or video record this open session is required to inform the chair. And that's me. Anybody recording? All good? We have a new member tonight, Craig Chadwick. We're happy to have you here, Craig. Thank you. So, Charlene, should we begin? Uh, you read the um, legal notice into the record the last time, so you just simply need to reopen the hearing, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we'll reopen the hearing. The public hearing today is for PB 2018-26, Allen Harbor Marine Service Applicant. And you don't need to read the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> Save you a little. We're good. Uh, site plan permit review with waivers pursuant to the code of the town, section 325-55 for the proposed storage of boats, including boat stands and trailers at property located at 221-225 Route 28. Map 14 parcels W1-1 and W3-2, respectively, in the CH1 zoning district. This is a continuation of the hearing from July 24th. No testimony was taken at that time. So, if you gentlemen will introduce yourselves, your names and where you're from. And sure, I'm Brad Malo. I'm with Coastal Engineering Company. Uh, we prepared the application and the plans. Uh, for the project. Nice to see you. All right, thank you. I'm Craig LeBlanc from Allen Harbor Marine Service. I really appreciate you folks uh, adjusting the schedule to accommodate my timeline. So thanks a lot for, uh, for doing this. Really appreciate it. Okay. Are you going to give your report? Oh, you okay. should first. Okay. You go, All right. you go ahead. Well, thank you. And I do have, so you know, Brad, I do have the existing and the proposed. Okay, <coughs> great. Uh, first of all, the, um, the applicant is Allen Harbor mm -hmm. Marine Service, Inc. Uh, the applicant is proposing to purchase the property currently owned by Philip Baroni and John Pratt, trustees of the Gray Neck Road Realty Trust. Uh, included in the package was a consent uh, from the owners uh, for this application. The existing property is in the uh, CH1 district located at the corner of Gray Neck Road and Route 28. It's also known as the address of 221 and 225 Route 28. Properly, uh, the property presently consists of two developed lots, uh, historically developed or otherwise, uh, consisting of approximately 40,810 square feet. The property uh, most recently uh, was improved with a uh, paved curb cut off of Great Neck Road, make that Gray Neck Road, and uh, wrong town for Great Neck. <laughs> <laughs> Gray Neck. Uh, stone gravel parking areas in the central portion of the property, and the remainder of the site consists of mulched areas, lawn, and otherwise vegetated landscaped. Now the property is also improved with five existing post lamps, which illuminate the interior of the site. There's an extensive vegetated buffer along the easterly and the southerly boundaries uh, in conjunction with existing stockade fences along the south and the southeasterly boundaries that adjoin the developed residential properties. Uh, easterly, the abutter is a seaside village condominium and there are also some residences along the south of the property. Property lies mostly within a FEMA-designated AE flood zone. Uh, there's a small portion of the southeast corner that is outside of the flood zone boundary. Um, the property has been most recently used by the mill store for uh, displaying garden sheds for sale. And uh, at the time of our survey, a couple of those remained, but I believe they have all since been removed from the property as of uh, my most recent site visit of last week. The proposed project as depicted on the plans uh, for Allen Harbor as they're proposing to use the existing site with relatively minor changes. The changes are proposed 
which include regrading, especially to the south and east corner of the parcel that, that it, the ground elevates somewhat. Uh, the replacement of a portion of the exi existing vegetation and lawn areas uh, is proposed to be uh, replaced with gravel P-stone surface. Um, essentially, this is a proposed site for <coughs> storage of boats as part of their marine service operation. The boat storage is an allowed use in the CH1 district. We have proposed an existing, uh, well, there's an existing stormwater drainage system where proposing to replace that and the drainage calculations have been submitted in the package uh, to handle the 24 hour, 25 year stormwater uh, runoff event. And as I said, it's a, it's a gravel driveway surface. Um, vegetationally, as I said, there's, a, there's an existing screen around the adjoining properties, but also along the street, there are several hardwood trees that are included. Uh, including uh, red oaks and on Great Neck Road, there are some sugar maples. The site plan proposes to augment those plantings with seven uh, new trees in kind, four of which on along Route 28 and three on the Great Neck Road site. With the application, we're requesting waivers and we framed these waivers with if they are in fact uh, necessary in fact, um, from a parking standpoint, typically a parking plan is associated with a structure and a use of that structure. And in this case, we have no permanent structures proposed um, above ground, <coughs> except for a, a retaining wall to retain the earth. Um, so it, we feel that a waiver may be appropriate. Um, and we've actually requested a waiver of the catalog of, of requirements under the parking. Um, and those are identified in the package that was submitted. Uh, specifically, the requested waivers include, as I said, if applicable, uh, from the off-street parking schedule, that's 325.39, the loading requirements in 325.40, location requirements, 325.41, and design requirements, 325.42 or any portion thereof as the board may deem appropriate. Uh, the reasoning for the waiver uh, proposed and the justification for the granting of those waivers is that the proposed use is to store boats and associated trailers or stands that support them. Uh, the boats are a variety of sizes and shapes and the site is really not set up with a gravel surface to delineate any particular parking designations. Uh, there's no business or public use proposed for the site, so only access to and from the storage area will be by the staff of Allen Harbor Marine Service. The perimeter of the perimeter uh, parking limits are shown on the plan. Uh, they do conform with the various uh, setbacks from the street and, and property boundary setbacks as it relates to the, to the zoning requirements. However, the site is uh, not proposed as a parking area for vehicles, as I indicated, that's normally associated with a business or a structure. And it's our opinion that the parking and the loading requirements are not applicable in this case. Additionally, we have requested a waiver from the landscaping requirements. We have not proposed a landscape plan although I would submit that we have proposed uh, landscaping, at least from a tree standpoint, uh, that is um, appropriate for the number of upside, number of trailer storage and boat storage um, locations that we are proposing upwards of 60. Um, the 10% interior green space that's called for in the bylaw for 20 more parking spaces is uh, not provided, however. Um, we would submit that the perimeter uh, landscaping that exists and what is proposed is really the essence and the importance of uh, the landscaping in this particular case in that the interior of the site needs to be maintained for maneuverability for the trailer uh, and boat storage to get inside to, uh, the site and maneuver appropriately. Uh, it's uh, impractical to have interior islands and landscaping uh, with such a use on this property. Um, the 
application was initially submitted and then in response to staff comments, we replied with additional information on the 25th of July uh, and some specific indication of the size of the boats that would be stored mm -hmm. uh, was indicated and those could range uh, anywhere from 11 or 15 feet to 33 feet or so. Um, we are, we have ghosted in on the proposed site plan a 30 by 10 foot typical area for each of the boat storage areas and that's intended to illustrate a configuration that could be used mm -hmm. and I think over a period of use of the site, Allen Harbor Marine will actually determine the exact configuration that works best for the size and types of the, of the boats that are going to be stored out there. Mm -hmm. But it gives an indication of the number of boats, as I indicated, about 39 to 60, based on the particular uh, size of, of the boats. Um, as part of the site plan waiver requirements, we don't feel that a dumpster is necessary. There's no trash generated on this site. The, the boats will become shrink wrapped mm -hmm. um, there and, and there'll be long term storage uh, on the site. So it'll be a seasonal come and go kind of uh, kind of uh, process. There are some more information in the submitted package and uh, Perhaps I could just turn it over to the commission, I mean to the board, if you have any particular questions. Um, be glad to answer them. Sure, we will, the board will ask any questions that uh, we have and we can start, Joe. Mr. Chairman, yes. excuse me, I think it might be helpful if we got the staff analysis before we got into Please. the board discussion. Sure. Staff analysis? Okay. Yes, from Charlene. Okay, thank you. Go. Uh, relative to comments from other boards, committees, and departments in town, uh, health department had no concern, fire department had no concern. Uh, conservation, this fell within their jurisdiction as it is within a floodplain. It was before them on Ju uh, July 5th and it was approved. Engineering had no concern, meaning that they've reviewed the uh, drainage calculations and they were fine with those. Uh, highway department had no concern. Police Department, from a criminal justice uh, public safety aspect, the Police Department has no issues with the project. Uh, they did recommend, however, that the lot be encircled with some type of fencing for security purposes. And also they understand that there is uh, no curb cut to occur on Route 28. Uh, my own staff uh, comments. On July uh, 12th, 2018, I did send a letter to um, Mr. Mayor outlining questions um, and or concerns that I had regarding the plan. Uh, Mr. Malo's letter dated the 25th of July and the additional plan submitted uh, clearly satisfied all the questions and comments that I had raised. So I have no issue with the plan as it stands. Again, this property is completely within, almost completely within a FEMA flood zone uh, with an elevation of 11. As no buildings or structures are proposed here, this actually is an ideal use for this commercially zoned property. Uh, I do believe that the requested waivers are appropriate and um, I do recommend that just the standard conditions be imposed. Thank you very much, Charlie. Uh, Mr. McFarland. If I could ask your client a, a question. Sure. Are you going to become title holder of this property? It was unclear from the application or are you a tenant here? I will be title holder. So you will end up owner? Yeah. Okay. And could you comment uh, on the uh, police department uh, 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 recommendation, I guess is the right way. I mean, I'm not sure that's where it should come from, but it did, uh, about the fence. Well, I think the, the only way that a fence would provide true security is if you continue the six foot stockade fence all the way around, mm -hmm. even that isn't generally meant for security from what you know when I think of a stockade fence really the only secure way to go would be uh, chain link with razor wire yeah. on top um, which isn't the best looking in the world so I'm um, security is a minor concern but the idea of putting up um, you know that chain link fence along gray neck all the way around 28 um, or even stockade, just the appearances would, I don't think that would go over very well. So 
Um, we don't have any um, security issues at the marina facility. Um, I won't say any, but it's few and far between. Maybe once every four or five years, we have something um, flashy or something stolen off a boat. Yeah. And it's more likely the few times it has happened during the summer when the boats aren't shrink wrapped and there's a fishing rod in someone's boat and somebody walking by s helps themselves. So I am concerned about it, but I, the idea of a fence, at least initially, isn't really in my plans. Um, if after a season or two of storage, there was constant issues, then I'd probably rethink that. But um, And I know they're not yours, but get those old couches out of there that are laying there now, will you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope not to. And I hope those aren't part of the sale. <laughs> that, that'll come up, believe me. I've been watching those too. <laughs> we, have a, we have a couple more questions, Mr. Atkinson. Yeah, uh, continuation of the discussion with regard to security. Have you ever given any thought to just an occasional like roving security that would go through the property, you know, maybe every two or three hours or something during the evenings in order to just sort of keep an eye on what's going on on the property? We, ha we, we used to have that years ago at the marina. We'd have yeah. a security service come through um, two or three times a night. Yeah, right, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, I guess I, we discontinued it. This goes way back. I believe it was just because nothing ever happened, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, we'll be in the on this property almost daily uh, during the fall, especially over the winter into the spring. And one of the we have, when we store all the boats, one of the things we look for is if the sh if the shrink wrap is cut, sort of take a walk around each time you're in there. If you see stuff on the ground, um, you'd go check it out. Um, but that's that's a, a good question. I don't know that I made a decision on having hiring security. Yeah, another potential suggestion instead of hiring security would be if you had like video camera surveillance that would then take so that, uh, and then you put, you know, place notices, you know, on the property that there was video surveillance and that there was, you know, taping going on. That may be at least some type of deterrent. Sure. Yep. Ms. Maslowski. Um, my question uh, was more to the storage itself. Are you proposing, you're saying, you said no structures, so I'm, does that mean no racks? Or you'll just have ground storage for the boats? Okay, great. Any other questions from the board? Craig? I have some questions. Um, it's purely storage and no maintenance, um, washing of boats, painting of boats, sanding of boats in preparation for a season, just pure Correct. storage. Yep. Um, and I would assume then no hazardous materials are gonna be stored on the site, gasoline, oil, paint, paint thinner, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Um, I notice the electrical panel is gonna be relocated. Is that something that the electric company designates, dic dictates, or is that something you're doing as part of improvement? That's a little up in the air now. The electric oh. panel exists in an awkward location, and uh, I was out there and, today. And we, are, we have designated a small island, because there is a well for irrigation yeah. purposes, so it needs an electric supply, so that, and, and there is an existing lighting system, so that will have to be relocated in close proximity, probably within five or 10 feet of where it is. And that today. shed is gonna stay, that that's specific that's shed is gonna stay there? That's proposed I, to go. Yeah, oh, that, that's oh. the yeah. current owners. Um, looks like they store tools in there and off the, that wasn't part of the deal, oh. as they say. <laughs> so so gonna, we'll see. You can trade that for the, the uh, leather lounge chairs or something. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that shed's in a bad spot, so it's, yeah. I don't um, see needing it. I was, I was surprised that it was still there. But Okay. I'll have to check with the, the seller on that one. In the hours of operation, uh, primarily um, time of operation through the year, spring and fall, but um, you're not going to be pulling boats at 3 a.m. or putting boats no. back at 9 a.m. Is it typically your business day? Correct. Operation? Okay. Yeah, there wouldn't, wouldn't be any occasion. Um, the springtime, um, I could see it stretching till five thirty, six o'clock. Gotta get o'clock. my boat in the water. 
<laughs> you would ever be able. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, generally, no, there w it wouldn't be any um, transient traffic or during the nights. No. Okay. And the the retaining wall, the, it looks like the current grade goes from the back corner of that property down into the towards the center of the property and the retaining wall is that to hold back drainage what's the the ground in the, along the property line on the southeast quadrant right. of the site is higher yes, than exactly. the site so to leave that undisturbed we're proposing a retaining wall that so that the like uh, the adjacent off. part to the neighbors it will remain on it's not touched. Gonna, by putting the retaining wall, it's not going to cause groundwater that now runs from that back corner down into the center of the property, back Correct. into the it's, neighborhood. Uh, it's cutting into that in, into that hillside, so we'll be lower. Nothing will be going off the Over. property. Correct. Okay. Um, so I have. Okay, Jim. Thank you. Okay. If, are there any more questions from the planning board? Any members? Okay. At, at this point, then we can open up. Uh, any questions that anyone from the public might have and if you have questions we ask that you come up to the microphone and state your name and your address and speak to the speaker good evening um, my name is Virginia Doyle and I live in West Harwood excuse me and I'm here to represent many of the neighbors in that area um, we are quite concerned about this happening number one the visibility in that area for driving is extremely dangerous. Uh, we have all of the traffic coming and going from the Lighthouse Cafe, from the post office. That particular parking lot is just so congested and difficult. I understand and realize that this property would be too expensive for the town to purchase. Um, however, this little parking <coughs> lot is really a liability for a lot of residents. Number two, um, just from a visibility point of view, just driving out of those side street and along 28 to have huge boats that are wrapped in white material uh, does constitute a visibility uh, problem for people that live in the neighborhood. And number three, I do have to ask, it was my understanding that something like this would have to be under industrial zoning, not commercial zoning. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know the answer to that. I, I will refer your question to Charlene Greenaw, our planner. It is an allowable use by right in this zoning district. Okay, so they can do an industrial type of thing within this commercial. Boat storage is not considered industrial. Oh, it if is they not. were doing maintenance and those kind of thing, that would be a very different okay. All right. use, but All this right. is strictly boat storage. Okay. A lot of the residents in West Harwich have been working very hard to beautify the area, and this does not seem to me to be something that is going to enhance the beautification of this area. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that we're you know, we don't have much chance in this regard, but it is a concern to a lot of people. And it would be ideal if it could be situated on Great Western Road or some other place and right, right on 28 in West Harwich. But thank you for your time. Ms. Doyle, thank you very much for your comments. We appreciate them. Are there any more comments from anyone in the audience? Would anyone like to speak up? Hearing no further comments. Is, is this a public hearing? Yes, it is. Who could close the public <laughs> hearing? Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's a consensus vote. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve uh, the following waivers pursuant to uh, paragraph 400 of the town bylaw as requested based on the facts presented by the applicant. One relative parking requirements, paragraph 325-38 through 42, including dumpster requirement. Two, landscaping requirements, paragraph, uh, I'm sorry, section 325, paragraph 43C. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the following proposed findings. Uh, one, the property is located within the CH-1 zoning district. Two, the use is allowable by right. Three, the property is located within the FEMA flood zone E1.11. Actually, it's elevation, elevation 11. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. No structure buildings are proposed. No structures or buildings are proposed. Five, the access is over the existing curb cut on Gray Neck Road. Six, no curb cut onto Route 28 is proposed. Seven, the waivers requested do not substantially derogate from the purpose and intent of the bylaw. Second. Are there, is there any discussion on the motion? I'd like to take a vote, please. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Finally, Mr. Chairman, to, to approve the conditions, case number PB 2018-26, Allen Harbor Marine Service, Inc., applicant, parent, Gray Neck uh, Road Realty Trust owner, close parent, care of Bradford P. Mello, project manager, for a site plan review special permit with waivers pursuant to the code of the Town of Howard 325-55 for the proposed storage of boats, including boat stands and trailers, at property located at 221 and 225 Route 28, Map 14, parcels W1-1 and W3-2, respectively, in the CH1 zoning district. The decision is based on the aforementioned findings of fact, the fact that the application meets the necessary requirements and criteria for approval pursuant to the code of the town of Howitch, and the fact that the use is permitted in the zoning district with the following conditions. One, signage shall comply with the requirements of the Code of the Town of Howitch and the Building Department. <coughs> and two, any changes in the site plan other than those resulting from mass DOT review and approval shall be subject to further planning board review and approval. Just on that one, um, I cut and pasted from a previous, obviously, condition. And other than resulting from mass DOT review does not need to be there because it doesn't have to go through Mass DOT review. So it but should it be. It is on the state logo, isn't it? It doesn't need it, though, because the okay. curb cut. So it should only read, any changes to the site plan shall be subject to further planning board review and approval. My apologies. Okay, and I'll second it as Charlene amended. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? We take a vote, please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? And against. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Any, uh, any further business? Adam Flanner? I have nothing. You have nothing on your agenda. There's nothing, nothing else on there. To discuss. Nothing further on Just the your agenda. next meeting is the 14th. Okay. Do I'd I like to make a uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Any discussion? Like to take a vote? Aye. 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 Aye.